Hey guys, welcome back. It is officially time to kick off the peak street car shootout at the Gerber Collision and Glass NHRA Route 66 Nationals presented by Peak. That's a mouthful, but it's everything all wrapped up. So we have our eight cars that went on our cruise yesterday through Joliet. We've got myself, Grubby, uh, Nick, Tom Bailey, Tom McGilton, Bryant Goldstone, Earl Schindiker, and I always miss one. We got eight. We got eight. Huh? I don't know who you missed this time. I might have got them all. Maybe I forgot to count. Anyways, we got eight really awesome cars here to represent what we do in Dragon and Drive. And uh, we're really excited that Pete brought us back, put us in the pro pits, got us all set up. So um, we run at about 2.30 today. We're running a little bit behind on schedule. Uh, something to do with weather most likely. It rained a lot yesterday. And uh, so we're scheduled for two, two runs today one tomorrow and two on Sunday. So once you guys are seeing this, you still have time to get your tickets, $7 off, click the link below, come out, say hi, hang out. It's beautiful in Chicago right now. Uh, glad to be here. But before we get all the car stuff figured out, Nick and I sat and did data last night, so I've got the tune ready to go in. This for the most part's ready. You can check in with dad, he's been working on it. I, however, am heading over to the Force Camp and I am going to be doing an interview with Brittany Force that you guys can watch on Peak. You'll see some behind the scenes here. And then also, I'm going to be warming up John Force's funny car. Now that's a really big deal because, trust me, it was not easy to make happen. Thank you, Peak family. Uh, we're all part of the Peak family, but thank you for making that happen. Uh, so we're gonna go over there, warm it up. So we have a full day before our day actually begins. So this uh, Bucky's covered black rifle coffee here, not mad keeping us going. All right, come on. The person you forgot was right behind you. Dave Schroeder, he was the eighth. He was already in my mind. That's the eighth. All right, let's go.
so many sponsors got on board with it. It's like underneath that rusty patina, it's like you know, pro mod level almost. You know, it's the same certifications, things of that nature, but it's just kind of an ugly shell. You know, like I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an ugly. That's show. what I just said. What are you saying here? Okay, I got to tell you this. In my era, I graduated from high school in '67, but I must say, to me, it was the '54, '55, '56, '57 Chevy. Could never afford it. A Nomad. I got them later from like you see and stuff. But I took my, my '54 Chevy, and my mother bought it from someone she worked with at a donut shop, and. It had a six-cylinder motor, but my brother Louie cut off the exhaust where I could uncap it. I put Mickey Thompson mags on the front, uh, and I put big old slicks on the back, right? And it was a three-speed on the column, and I drove it through Harvey's Broider in Downey where all the everybody went. And I'd come to there and rumble, and whenever set up there, some guy says, I want to challenge you to a race. I wasn't even a racer, right? I said, no, oh, no. And they jerked my hood on. And uh, I was a laughing stock. <laughs> There's a six cylinder in there. And I said, yeah, are you nuts? All this shit, that I just wanted to be a racer. You know? <laughs> and so then I went on to get cars. And, and uh, we put blowers on cars on a street, uh, 396 Chevy Motors. And, and we never even had an idea. Pound the gas and blow the transmission out. One smoke, that stick chip down. Too stupid to put a, some, this, this got a, a uh, turbo for him. Yeah, it didn't have no money. It just <laughs> did what was good to the race. And uh, so now we ended up in a knock of those that you had to clean. You know, it's the only thing. Did you Chris Whittier, Dan Ice? Oh, yeah. Instagram works down. Well, then you heard of Harvey's Broider. Oh, yeah. I used to call it her Harry's brother. Yeah. But if Harvey's Broider, that was a big place. I lived in a trailer park across the street, not in Firestone. And uh, the Tweedy Boulevard, best days of my life. Oh, yeah. I, it, see, I grew up in prison. I grew up in prison. I'm not kidding. In Orange, we had the mall in Orange, so we did the large tube back to my baby. I think we did. It's just going to be time. We'll start doing going through our shootout process tomorrow. Um, I just warmed up John Force's car a little bit ago and had a conversation with Brittany and John, and they came over to our car, and it was an incredible time getting to learn more about them and connecting. We realized we had a lot in common, and uh, warming up a 12,000 horsepower funny car is not something that's on your to-do list every day, uh, so it's a really unique opportunity. With that said, all of their high energy has gone over to me, and we're both collectively very high energy people, and now I have incredibly high nerves. I always do going into a first round. Um, so if I get a pass under the 55, I'm going to feel much better. If I get everybody down the track, we get a pass, um, I'll be ready. I think I can calm down after that. So uh, it is time to get in the mindset. Pro mods are going. And then uh, we're going to go. And uh, we're going to hope the 55 does good. It should be like a 670. And with that said, it is time to get going.
that's an injector. I think there's something in the tune. They were up there waving me down, and I'm like, I'm like, try and start the car. Start it, put it in gear, die. Start it, put it in gear, die. Start it, put it in gear, die. And I was like, so I just got out, I had my full suit on, and I'm pushing it. They're like, well, wait, 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 and they come running. And I was like, I can't get this by myself. And then um, I was going to leave. Same thing. Start, turn it on, die. Start, so I freaking neutral drop this thing. I was like, Burp! and it goes, Burp! and it pulled out. <laughs> temperature it was slick we spun we still I think had like the quickest run uh, but it wasn't anything to write home about it was a 7-eleven I don't know what the mile an hour was the clock was messed up so it would be 70 miles an hour um, came back I didn't have a full pass of data something happened uh, so I was at least able to see how far out we were when it spun consulted with our uh, Mickey Thompson guy here Jason <laughs> Got some data information and we looked at the tune together and kind of came up with a game plan of how we wanted to go about this next run. We're going to uh, pull a little power out of it and try to get it down the track. Uh, this is still just a time run, just a, basically a practice run. And we're going to see if uh, we can run a decent pass. Probably not going to be a 670 because we have so much power pulled out of it um, through the 60. But other than that, it should be good. We're playing it kind of safe because the only data we have is the, the plugs that Dad pulled out. And we got fresh plugs. Yep. But we're being safe. We got fresh plugs in it. And we'll read them after this and hopefully have data. Yeah, to match it to. Exactly. Yeah. So we're just on the safe side. Yeah, what do you think? You got any thoughts? Do I have any you, thoughs? You can say you like terms. I can say anything. It needs a Linco is what he thinks. Well, we, we, could, <laughs> we, we could put a clutch in it, and I think that would help. But, but that aside, I have complete confidence in the team and the tires. I mean, what, what's there to worry about? What's your favorite color? What's my favorite color? Uh, probably red. Okay. Probably red. Oh, ice cream all day long. Uh, one more. Do you like dogs or cats? Dogs. Yep. Yeah, all right, that's, that's easy. three facts about Jason. <laughs>